Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and just look at that title. How many of you knew that your boy here would be doing the dulcet tones for this one? You are goddamn right, as I will put it out there that being an asshole in the medium of video games can be one of the silliest and funniest things around. Now I, believe it or not, am not a trash bag asshole in real life, or at least I try not to be, but as soon as the video games are on, then my moral compass might as well just throw itself out the bloody window, as why not fight and steal and cuss? your way to the top of the digital dojo. So today, let's pull the chair out from under our nans as they try to sit down, flip the bird to the nice postman who works so bloody hard, and plop your plums in someone else's pudding. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that let you be an utter scumbag. Number 10. Any Hitman Game now, there will be some out there that argue that Hitman's Agent 47 isn't really that bad because he only generally assassinates bad people who are totally asking for it, like Sean Bean, for example. But can we really contend that everyone he murders was really that deserving? I mean, after all, the game does see you adopt a mentality of eliminate this target by any means, and those means usually result in you snapping necks, knocking people out, and downright shooting anyone who gets in your way. I mean, sure, you could argue that you're just pacifying a load of these goons and service workers, but trust me, no one should be out for as long as these people are. This is likely causing the massive physical trauma. Plus, it's not like 47 has been delicate with their bodies, leaving them near naked and out in the open. Plus, we need to only look at the motives behind the murders. They aren't about saving the world for the greater good and more along the lines of making bank and protecting a shady organization from being outed by other terrorist cells and twisted hackers. And also, as a final caveat, if your job is to murder someone, then at least give them a quick and painless death and not, say, drown, electrify, burn, bury alive, or push to their death, as that does make you kind of somewhat an absolute shed load evil. Number 9. Destroy All Humans I mean, come on, look at the title, it's like that scene from The Simpsons with the monster that ate everyone. In that this game, you destroy all humans. Even those that are just minding their own business, you destroy all humans, stupid! How can you not be a scumbag because of this? I mean, just look at the opening interaction between Crypto and Pox in which you can't wait to, well, destroy all humans! Now, you could argue that we started the war with these little grey men because we accidentally damaged one of their ships, but the counter-argument to this would be to look at the amount of of devastation, the amount of deaths, and the sheer amount of brains literally ripped from within their human bodies has proof that this is going a tad overboard. There is no shred of doubt that you are a true and blue, uh, well, I guess grey in this case, scumbag. But then again, it doesn't stop it from being a lot of fun, does it? Hey, 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 hey. Number 8. Payday 2 if the entire premise of your video game is robbing people, then chances are you're not going to be playing as people on first-name basis with the Pope, is it? Such is the case with Payday 2, which allows you and friends to team up and rob silly amounts of money from store owner and corrupt politician alike. No one is safe from the crusty arm of crime, and I mean that in a literal sense as the body count one usually racks up in these missions, both civilian and from law enforcement, are extreme. It would be wrong for people to claim that this gang are in the right based on who they are robbing from as the collateral damage is so large that it's like a black hole has rolled through town when this lot pulls up. From abusing hostages to popping caps into police just trying to make you calm the chuff down, Payday 2 is a scumbag paradise through and through. And that's before you even try unpacking all the weird shenanigans that go on with the Ark and the body swapping Bane and, and the secret ending and… ah, oh, my brain hurts. Number 7. Overlord if ever there was a game that perfectly showcases my working relationship with the sprouts that share this channel with me, it is Overlord, as in this rather overlooked and underappreciated gem, you get to take up the metal mantle of the evil Overlord as they try to take control of the world one pathetic peasant town at a time with the help of their ever-growing hordes of minions. The game is rife with dark humour, showing all these so-called heroes of the lands to be actually as corrupt as you are. However, the Overlord will always hold a place in our dark scumbag hearts because of the fact that they willingly exploit their workforce, have no issue with death and destruction, and even get to make important choices such as enslaving a town or burning it to the bloody ground. If you've got a bad bone in your body, then Overlord and its sequel are the best thing to scratch that itch. Number 6. Postal 2 
Now, hands up, I don't actually like this game. In fact, I don't think it's just very good. However, I will say this. It's almost impossible not to be a scumbag in this title, seeing as it's about you going on a rampage that is ever escalating. It's also one of the most controversial games ever made, and it is not hard to see why. Even if you try to maintain a pacifist approach, it won't be long before you're strapping cats to your guns, pissing on people, and turning everyone into mulch all across the overworld of paradise. Again, you can can play most of Postal 2 peacefully, but where's the fun in that? This is pure grotty wish fulfillment at its most morally debased, and it's probably the only game in which you can actually murder Gary Coleman should you choose to, which may well be the most bizarre thing I can think of. Well, at least right now, that is. Number 5. Black and White Peter Molyneux's legendary god simulator might not have fully delivered on the designer's ambitious vision. I mean, no shock there, seeing as Peter couldn't deliver a pizza without claiming that the bloody box will do my f***ing taxes for me, but it did get one thing truly right, and that was the sheer sense of power that the player was imbued with. As the deity overseeing a number of island tribes, you're able to act as a benevolent, evil, or tweener god, with your behaviours reflected by the state of your worshippers. Now, hilariously, the player is shepherded by a good and evil advisor, each trying to pull them in the respective direction. And though the appeal of building an idyllic settlement speaks for itself, who amongst us could resist becoming death incarnate, the destroyer of worlds? For example, when I saw my worshippers trying to dunk their bread in water before eating it, I went, no, no, stop that, no, stop it, I am not a duck, I don't like wet bread, and by that I mean I sent my avatar to go kick them from Cornwall to Aberdeen. <laughs> Elsewhere, you can instill fear and create a malevolent theocracy of sorts, expending your followers like cattle and violently murdering them when they're either disobedient or no longer useful. And if you do this enough, the game will actually change its visual appearance to suit your new scumbag outlook. Number 4. Kane and Lynch – Dead Men Remember Kane and Lynch, Eidos's third-person shooter franchise that just came and went without much of a peep in the late 2000s, and that might be in part to the fact that Kane and Lynch as characters were utter scum and not in the good way. While most of the douchebag characters on this list at least have some sort of charm or sense of moral justification, Kane and Lynch are just pure immoral trash from start to finish. For example, while Kane tries to inform the player that he loves his kidnapped wife and daughter, he acts out of selfishness and kills without a second thought. And Lynch? Well, Lynch makes what me and your mum got up to in the bedroom with that mango body butter, a melon baller, and that Chinese finger trap look normal, as his life is a goddamn pigsty. He's a man who literally murders innocent hostages, and also, that is my inflamed and quite red one per list. You'll want to take a long shower after playing these games, and not just because of their absolutely filthy outlook, but also because you'll need to wash the sick off you thanks to all that motion blur in the second title. Ugh, grim. Number 3. Super Seducer – How to Talk to Girls and speaking of grim, let's talk about Super Seducer, a game that is not just simply front-runner for creepiest and controversial game of the year every year, but is also just downright sad. It was posed as a self-help tool for men with less social grace than 4chan and how it would help them chat to women. Now, here's the thing. Social anxiety, that is something that does suck, and it actually really does prevent people from forging meaningful relationships. It is not a joke, though this is something beyond the pale. The skits are skin crawling and have been held up by psychologists as perfect examples of negging, gaslighting, and psychological abuse. Yes, they are that bloody bad. And the worst thing is, is that it's played remarkably straight-laced. So yes, if you want to manipulate women, look like a creep, and wear cheap suits like our host here, then Super Seducer is the scumbag game for you. Although I'd say just save yourself some time and watch the many, many cringe montages this game has out there on YouTube. Number 2. Grand Theft Auto V it's fair to say that pretty much every single Rockstar game has cast the player in the role of a thoroughly detestable shit teal, but Grand Theft Auto V represents the absolute peak of that formula. If the freedom to relentlessly murder your way through a giant open world isn't enough, you can now do it from a more intimate first-person perspective, take darkly comical selfies of the carnage for posterity, and even aggravate your fellow players in GTA Online. But what really makes GTA the next level is that it introduces you to one of the most morally bankrupt 
corrupt and despicable characters in the entire series' history, Trevor Phillips. Now, unlike almost every other protagonist in the series, there is no disconnect between the character presented in the game's cutscenes and the unrestrained lunacy that we naturally assume during his gameplay segments. He is, in many ways, a distillation of the wish fulfillment everyone engages in while playing GTA, because he doesn't care about anyone but himself, and he actively relishes killing people. It's actually a quite a poignant reflection that Rockstar has made out of the very player base that plays them. But you know what? Less said about the by the book mission, the better, because that, well, that was something else. And number one, hatred. And finally, we end with a game that is widely loathed and only really liked by true scumbags. Hatred. On paper, it's clear why people, well, hated Hatred, being a game that puts you in the edgelord shoes and out of fashion trench coat of a man wishing to kill as many people before he too is taken out. It's shallow, it's baiting, and the worst thing about it is that it's so very boring, with this twin stick shooter having all the depth of a puddle of sick and is about as appealing to get to grips with. And if you weren't already convinced of this scumbaggery yet, the game literally ends with him causing a nuclear explosion which kills literally millions of people, all for the hell of it. It's not even a water cooler masturbator bollocks game, this, it's just absolute bollocks and only one for true scumbags. And trust me, as I said before, no one wants to be a true scumbag, do they? And there we go, those were 10 video games that let you be an utter scumbag. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, but before you go, you know what? You should not be a scumbag, well, full stop, but also to yourself and your mental well-being. You deserve love, happiness, and success, my friend, whatever you are getting up to today. I hope you do well at it. And you know what? If you don't, if you fail at stuff, that is absolutely fine as well, because our society puts way too much pressure on succeeding first and every time. Just take your time, reflect on your losses or your mistakes, learn something from them, and forge ahead. And if you need help with any of this, remember, you can speak to people. There is no shame or weakness in that. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter if you want to chat about this or anything else. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!